Hey Fogrobly, John here, and this is Fogrobly's Focus, where I take some time to share my favorite photography-related things from around the web, and I pose a discussion topic for you to talk about in the comments below. This week, DPS shared five tips for creating creepy Halloween photographs, Florn shows you some great Photoshop tricks for spooking up your images in a four-part series, Camera Plus adds a lossless TIFF capture mode to their popular iPhone app, and I ask, how much thought do you put into your photographs? Let's bring it into focus. Looking to take some spooky photos this Halloween season? Well, Laurie Peterson, one of my fellow DPS writers, wrote a nice guide on creating creepy Halloween images for DPS this week. The cliff notes are pretty basic. Determine a theme, pick some props, scout your location, determine if you need a model or not, and then shoot. That said, Lori has some cool tips and some great advice in the article, so if you're looking to make some creepy shots this weekend to spook your friends, I'll put a link in the description below so you can read on your own time. To continue on with the Halloween theme, Florin published four great Photoshop tutorials on creepifying your photographs. I've created a playlist, which I'll link to in the description below so you can watch them all when you've got the time, but the tutorials cover things like turning teeth into fangs, creating bloody scars, blacking out eyes, and a great guide on blending modes in Photoshop. Let me know what you think of the tutorials in the comments below. This week, one of my favorite camera apps for the iPhone pushed out a pretty interesting update. Camera Plus now supports the ability to capture lossless TIFF files instead of a compressed JPEG. This isn't something I'd recommend using on every selfie you take, as the files are substantially larger. However, for those scenes that require the most detail possible, and all you've got is your iPhone, this is one worth keeping in your back pocket. I've only just started diving into the new Pro feature, so I don't have all the details quite yet, but I do plan on writing a full review and comparison of the Tiffersk JPEG files on the blog in the coming weeks. However, in the meantime, I'd like to hear your thoughts on actually using a TIFF file with the iPhone. And if you've actually used it, do you actually think that the quality that you get out of the TIFF file is worth the trade-off in space? So leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. The days of film are long in our past now, and in this digital age, firing off shot after shot means almost nothing when the average SD card can hold hundreds of raw images, and once full it can be swapped out in a matter of seconds just to give you even more photos. So no longer does a mistake come at the cost of a lost frame in a very limited roll of film. But it's still important to actually spend time thinking about the images that you capture. I truly believe that if you do this, you will get better photographs in the end. However, I don't think you are supposed to just think about a photograph from your own personal point of view, but rather imagine different personas when you're capturing a photograph. So the two personas that I like to imagine when I try and capture my photos are, one, a different photographer, someone that's not invested into the photo that I'm trying to capture into a person who isn't a photographer and thus is more likely to actually purchase the photograph. I kind of go through and ask myself basic questions as to whether or not this photograph is interesting in both their eyes and what kinds of things that both of these two types of personas might come and say to me if they were to see the photograph. And then ultimately I ask it myself, would any of these personas, and myself included, actually hang this photograph on the wall. Many times I say actually no to that question, and I ask myself, well, why am I taking this photo? Uh, a lot of times I don't really have a good answer to that question, and I'd love to hear your own opinion on that as well. Do you often ask yourself, do you, would you hang this photo on the wall? Or how much time do you actually spend thinking about the photographs you take? I think the more you do spend thinking about it, and the more time you spend looking at it from different points of view, the better your photos will become in the end. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this process and how much of it you actually do on your own. And as always, if you liked what you've seen here and you'd like to see more, click right here to subscribe.